Hey guys, I'm Andy Woodard, president of FPC Carolina Elite Basketball. Also a professional player development coach. Along with me, I have some of my co-trainers. This is Marie. Hi, I'm Marie Marquez. I am an international skills development coach with the Junior MBA and founder of True to Hoops Training. Hey, this is Mario. I'm Demario Greer. I am a coach slash trainer at FPC Carolina Elite. Been doing it for a while. I'm a player at Pfeiffer University. Um, Hall of Fame player there, played overseas a little bit, um, and I'm here with these guys, loving it. So guys, let's just get into this, and let's, what does player development mean to you guys? I think it, you know, ultimately starts with having a relationship, a good connection with your your players and gaining their trust. I, I, what do you think about, where, where does it start for you, Mario? For me, uh, IQ. I okay. believe the IQ is important for all um, the overall development for decision making, late in the game, middle of the game, uh, time and score. Uh, I believe IQ is a real important part of it. So I, I start all my kids off with a lot of the IQ drill, a lot of IQ stuff. So when you guys are training, mm. what's the methods of training? Are you using cones yeah. to get to a certain level? Is props out of the question? How does that work with with going to IQ, you know, cause me, I tend to think like the more cones on the floor for a high level kid, the more you're gonna get them looking at the floor and not at the floor, you know, so. I think consistency with decision-making and concepts is extremely important. Um, so consistent decision-making um, in every drill or any anything that you're working on. Well, I believe that's a good point you made, uh, that, you know, cones in the way, so eyes are down, not actually surveying the floor. I take a different approach and I, I, I embrace it because when you kick the cone over and you, you're knocking it over and you're trying to see the floor and you're doing this at a fast pace, I believe you can correct it at a fast pace and you got to figure out how to move your leg, how to get around, how to sit it, how to twist your hip and get through that because it's a lot of players that's higher level week getting through those little tiny gaps on that wing where they're closing it down, you know, with little ankle dribbles. So I, I let them just mess up. Just Kick them over, figure it out, you know, but then we'll, before you know it, I see these kids over and over maturate and they start to get it, they start to get eyes up, they're not looking and I'm like, this is good. Yeah, but I take the different approach and say, you gotta do both. I even make them wear a prop, like you said, like props that shades I bought from my academy sports that is black out right here. Yeah. They can't look down, they hate it. Got to figure it out. This is the same time when they got cones down there. So you can't even look at the cone unless you do the grandma thing. You know how you take the glasses and you got to go. <laughs> so they can't look. So it just forces them to really think. So that's when you're tired and you have to think. That's where the IQ comes in at because you have to put it together. So let's talk about being tired. Um, you know, one of the main places to start with, you, know, you connect with them, you build their trust, and then you get them to commit 100%. What about the conditioning aspect? Because when we're fatigued, we can't focus and then the quality of our reps goes down. And that's something I believe in with when I'm training. The first thing I do is I get them, you know, warmed up and we do what we call a dynamic warm up. You know, so we get them going two or three minutes in a dynamic warm up. And then now we start them with sprints. So I have them run five down and back with increasing speed. Some of them sprint the whole time, some of them is increasing speed to five. Then we go in the line and we'll run some 11s down and back. And then I want to train at the point where I call it like third quarter training. Like anybody's good in the first quarter, <laughs> let's get to third quarter field and then put the hour in, you know? And then once you do that, then you start to realize who really has IQ. Because I think IQ really kicks in when, you know, your body says no, and then your brain has to work. And, you know, your, your heart has to work. So I think that's I think that's a good thing when it comes to, you know, tired and fatigue. So I call that training outside of my comfort zone. Yes. Right, there you go. Yes, or like yeah, third, yes. fourth quarter training. Mm -hmm. Like train outside your comfort zone. Oh, yeah. That's game speed reps, game spots, game shots. Mm -hmm. um, so quality reps is key because you don't have quality reps in one hour. One kid can improve, you know, this much. And in one yeah. hour, you know, fatigue kid can only take one or two steps because mentally they're not present. Yeah, they're not present you right. know, and if you can't play present, you can't make quality decisions. Right. So what about, let's say we have a big group session, right? And we have a huge skill gap. One thing I like to do is, I like to take my better kid, one or two of the better kids, and put them with the kids who are not so good. Mm -hmm. And let those kids see that, hey, it can be done, but you might have to work a little bit. You know, I see some people, they'll just have like 
garbage down here. Uh -huh. and then all Everybody else is good down yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, hey, thank you for coming. Good job. Yeah. And yeah. focus all the energy uh -huh. on one, you yeah. know. But, and isn't that a great opportunity to also coach character? Right. That's, that's right. right. You know, that's we're right. coaching their skill nine. development. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But we also have to develop leaders. That's right. You know, these college coaches are looking to recruit character kids. They want to coach basketball. They don't, right. want to, they don't want to have to you deal know, with the issues. That's exactly, exactly right. That's so right. it's a great opportunity to yeah. show, hey, this is the work ethic. This is the, the expectations we have as far as our best players, no matter who you are in our program. These are the kind of kids we're putting out. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. So do you guys, do you guys check? I know I try to stay on top of it as much as possible as many clients as you know, we all have. But uh, the academic side of it, do you guys try to stay Absolutely. in tune with Absolutely. with them with with yeah, academics absolutely. that's big for me that's i think that's a huge me. part of having a relationship with our family yep. um yeah. you know and just having that open line of communication with family and coaches because you know how are we going to know you know where they are if we're not communicating with the high school coach what right. they need to work on what their role is mm -hmm. you know a uh, family can have one perspective, a uh, high school coach can have a completely totally different, different yeah. uh, perspective. Yeah, which so is the, that's the having point. an open line of communication, um, you know, coaches, us working together um, and, and building an uh, open line of communication so we know, okay, this is what their needs are in the classroom, this is what their needs, this is how they learn, right. this is what they respond to, right. right? this is what the home situation is. Um, this is what gets them to tick. Mm -hmm. right. And then from there, we can be much more efficient and how we develop them and where do we start developing them and how do we continue that. Yep, and that, that's exactly what I'm big on is the outside of the court. Like I, the one thing I preach to my kids is that, the one thing I preach to my kids is you will play exactly how you live. It's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a point. You will live how you play and you will play how you live. So if you don't take your trash to the, to the garbage after you're done, you let it linger, you're going to be that kind of player. You're going to play that way. So I really stress to them to do your work, stay focused, stay on top of it because it'll trickle. You'll play that way. And that's when you can be more responsible. And then that's when coaches say, well, I don't have to worry about that player. So now you, you're a high level player. There. You're less worried off the court. So how do you train in-game situations? Me, I like to actually have a few girls with me and I use pop-up defenders and I have, I actually have a pop-up defenders with arms coming out, four arms. So you got the top and the bottom arms. So I like to do two on two ball movement and put backside help on the backside. So, and I might even have a chair here for the pin downs. When they come off the pin down, I have one of the girls there with the pad, okay, and a pop up defender in the lane. So they got to get through the defender and get the, the girl, the pad is silly and try to score it. They have to realize help's coming, you have to see the dump off, you know. And even if it's even if you don't see the dump off or don't make the dump off, you have to know it's there. Okay, you gotta know it's there. If you don't know it's there, something's not right. Vision, you have to see it. That's the decision you gotta make. You know? What do you think? Um, I start with, you know, practicing different situations. If we go baseline and help defender does this, we can practice also defense, like helping the helper, but also, okay, weak side, we have to relocate to the open spot, drift to the corner. You know, you know if they're in a zone, where are we gonna go? We're gonna relocate to, you know, situational. Even with their sets, let's say I talk to the high school coach and they're running a lot of four high sets, okay? So we're playing off of that UCLA cut, and then from there, boom, if we're gonna go into a pick and roll, here are my options showing, okay, if the defense does, you know, blitzes the ball, okay, do I wanna split it? Do I wanna hit the roller? You know, so just really putting them in situations and getting consistent reps over and over again, breaking down a couple of different options and reads. And I think that's, I think all of that is very important, man. And just to add on to a little bit of that is I just, I try to teach I try to teach a lot of being able to not respect your defender, but mm -hmm. let's respect the help. Mm -hmm. Right? So I think any kid should be have enough confidence to beat their defender and not worry about their defender. So if, if they're ready and they can see the help, then they can understand if they can see the help, then they can see who's open. They can see the basket, they can see everything that's open on all three levels of scoring from the three to the mid range, all the way to the basket. And, and I think that's the- making on that right. secondary oh, layer defense. That's because that's the, that's, the, that's the thing that I think college coaches, I think a D1 kid can score at all three levels. That's right. A D2 kid can score at two levels and D3 D1. kid can get that's one level. One level. That's right. that's you know, that's, that's what I think. So guys, let's talk about a little bit like when the kid gets down and they're in the dumps and they're not feeling their game. How do we get them out of it? You know, I think every player goes through cycles. You're gonna be doing well sometimes and sometimes you're gonna struggle. Um, I think a huge part of that, like I said, starting with 
you know, being connected with them and understanding how they tick and what motivates them. But then also coaching character, you know, being the same player regardless of your environment or your circumstances, having the same work ethic, which isn't easy. It's not easy uh, to you know, play defense when you're 0 for 5 or 0 for 6, you know. So it's in our, our skill development, having the same work ethic and commitment. I think staying committed um, and finishing the race is, is a huge part, you know, it's, it's so easy to want to walk away or change teams or programs mm -hmm. or, you know, blame your coach or teammate. So I think a big part of that is coaching character. For me, I just make them set their own standard. I really do. I like to ask them and talk to them beforehand. What, what college would you like to go to? What do you want to do after? You know, and they say all of the good stuff, right? UConn, South Carolina, I want this, I want this. So now I'm not pushing them to any other standard but theirs. So if it's a point to where you are doing something outside of the standard that you set, I'm going to have to remind you, Gino or Emma don't want to deal with it. You see, and, and I have no problem with you doing it. That's the decision you made as a player, but you told me you wanted to go to UConn, and let's go down the list of the UConn players. Let's look at all it. None of them does that, you see? So you have, that's the standard that you set. Let's go ahead and live by what you set. See, so I make them tell me the standards. They set their standards, and I just make them live by them, and I try to remind them. See that right there? See, that's not some, that's not that UConn type player. See, that's not a South Carolina type player. See, so now you got to kind of adjust that. I mean, I, you might not like it. We might not. It's hard, like you said, but we got to do what we got to do, you know, because it's a standard, again, that you set. You so see? reflecting on their goals, but what about reflecting on their successes? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Reminding them, that's okay, smart. you remember when you accomplished this? That's remember it. where you started yep. reflecting on where you started? You because go. Um, you know, it's easy to get stuck in the moment and your feelings will lie to you. So let's look back at where you were six months ago. That's right. That's and I like to go, you know, even even I would say like a step more than that in training because the way I like to train is I want to make them as uncomfortable as possible the entire time I'm with them. But I also let them know we're here to mess up all day. Mm -hmm. If you're getting this stuff right, that's a problem. I'm the wrong guy. That's right. That's right. You know, I'm the wrong right. guy. That's exactly like, right. I need to, I need you to be so uncomfortable. Right. That's right. Like you walk out of here and you're like, you know what? <laughs> I need to go work I on it. I need to work on it. That's right. right. That's right. It's if that's you come right. out of a workout, I mean, it's like, if we go somewhere and it's like, man, we smoke that. That's yeah, good, right? Joking. That's right. That's not. You're not going to go work on it. Nope. That but if you come out of there and you're like, I cannot get that step down. I cannot. You will be at work. You, you will, will be able to tell who the true hoopers are. Yeah. And they, they will be able to come out of that slump, that's you know, I think with the, that preparation, that's good. Yeah, so we want practice to be way harder than the game when that's we step right. into the, the game. It's easy. Light. it's easy. And they're like, well, I want to play again. Well, that's next week, killer. You know, oh, <laughs> <laughs> we got to go to practice. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>